I think one of the most annoying things that can happen is a flat tire. As you can see, I have a little bit of help today because this is gonna take some work. We have four, well, actually five, different tire rim combinations right here. And we're gonna see which one of these different products actually prevents flats the best. This is the Control. So this has no sort of flat preventative in it. It is a standard 26 by four inch tire with a tube in it pumped up to about 20 PSI. This is supposed to be the Tannis Armor, but we haven't installed that yet. But before we install them, I wanna talk about the pricing because there's a pretty wide variance. Let's start with the slime. The slime is the cheapest. You can buy a bottle that will fill two fat tires, so both tires on your bike, for less than $10. It was $9 and change. This is flat out $17.74. You look like you're doing an infomercial. Ouch. I'm not sure it works though. That's true. We actually haven't tested flat out. I've used slime for quite a few years on a lot of bikes and I know what it can and can't do. Now we have Mr. Tuffy tire liners. These are a polyurethane rubber. It's a liner that goes in between the tire and the tube to prevent things from poking through. They are... $64.97. I feel like this is the price is right. <laughs> exactly, $21.48. His bid is twenty-one forty-eight. That's an interesting bid. How did you settle on twenty-one forty? I seen that on there last week, and that was the exact price. So about sixty-five dollars for the Mr. Tuffy liners, and finally the most expensive one, coming in at a whopping one hundred and nineteen dollars and ninety-nine cents, the Tannis Armor, which is not a flotation device. It is this basically big, thick piece of foam that also goes in between the tire and the tube. The slime is the cheapest. It's the one that I already know how to do. So let's start with that first. So for the slime, you just hook up this tube. We're gonna put eight ounces of slime in. Go nice and slow so it doesn't explode all over my face. It shouldn't take that much muscle. <gasps> oh! If by chance you make a mess like I did, you can just take a hose and rinse that off. And we're just gonna put the core back in the stem and pump this up to 20 PSI like the other tire. And the flat out should be basically the same process. They recommend twice the amount of liquid for flat out. You put 16 ounces in each tire as opposed to the slime where they recommend eight. The other thing I learned about this is that supposedly it stays liquid for up to 10 years. Okay, that's about half the bottle. Let's try the Mr. Tuffy liners next. You wheel. read the directions and I'll just do stuff. Yeah, remove wheel from bike and deflate. Ta -da. Remove tire and tube. Insert one Mr. Tuffy all around the inside of the tire and overlap the end. Sounds like she's reading a story. A book? That's right. When I was your age, television was called books. And then they slightly reinflated the tube and inserted it back <laughs> into the tire. Which, it's been a while since I've done one of these because I remember not really liking the install of these. But what I remember doing is laying this out, putting a little air in the tube and kind of situating it in there to kind of hold it in place. Tire, iron, lever, scalpel. We don't have one of those. <laughs> Mr. Tuffy is done. These videos are a lot of hard work. <laughs> and then you take the tube and... <laughs> This is by far probably the most complicated install. Do you guys like my shirt? Somebody sent it to me for free. And the Tannis armor is on and just needs to be pumped up to 20 PSI like everything else. So now we have all four done. I think it's time to rank them by difficulty of installation. I would say that the slime and the flat out are identical. The advantage to those two is that you don't actually have to pull your wheels off of the bike. I've had trouble with Mr. Tuffy liner staying in place, but I think I just got lucky and that went fairly easy this time. The Tannis armor, because that foam is so thick, it takes a little more work to get the tire seated back on. It wasn't terrible, but out of all of these, they probably will take the longest. Now, the dreaded part where we get to pop holes in things. I'm so excited. We're gonna use a tack. This is the smallest, pokiest thing that I had. 
I think this would most simulate, at least here in Northern California, those nasty goat heads. Normally, you don't get a flat when it goes in. You get a flat when that thing comes out. There's a flat. There's a little pinhole right there. I'd say let's set it aside and poke the next one. We forgot the control. Poke the hole. Tack going in. Definitely has a leak. Flat out tack. Pinhole in the flat out. All right, we have our first winner with the tack of sorts because Mr. Tuffy, it looks like Jessica could not get through it with the tack. Tack, Tannis armor, Tannis armor wins. No air coming out at all, so the tube has not been punctured. Now instead of a tack, we're going a little bit bigger. We have a drill bit. We're back to our control. And there goes the drill bit leaking a lot of air now. If you are within a mile of home, you might make it. And if you're further out, I wouldn't do it. You better have a patch kit at this point. Slime. You can see green stuff has come out and plugged the hole from the tack. Drill bit into slime. So far on the slime, it's holding up. There's definitely a little air coming out, but it should seal that up. Flat out is next. Flat out seen seems like it comes out quicker than the slime does. All right, Mr. Tuffy versus the drill bit. I hear air coming out. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tuffy survived the tack very well, survived what I think would be equivalent to a thorn, did not survive the drill bit that unfortunately cut through it. And we now have air coming out, which means Mr. Tuffy is gonna go flat. Is the Tannis armor gonna be thick enough to prevent that drill bit from going through? Uh -oh. It went through. Did I hear air? Yeah. Time for a measurement. So with about a 0.7 inch drill bit, it went through the Tannis armor. So that is definitely beyond its limit. So much air, it's moving my hair. Now this is the type of road hazard that most things would not handle a wood screw. Definitely too long for the Mr. Tuffy or Tannis armor. We don't even really need to test it. Let's go ahead and try this on the slime since that is still holding up as far as I can tell. Slime versus wood screw. Oh boy. That is a pretty big hole. Now, as you can see, the tire is getting really soft from all the holes we've poked. How's the flat out looking? Like it hasn't gotten wow. any flats. So far, the flat out is very impressive. Jessica just said, like, we can't even really tell that it had a hole poked in it yet. But this might change that. Even just with one rotation, you can already see it bubbling out. That definitely let some air out. That did. We're gonna let those sit for just a moment and kind of let the air seep out, let the sealant do its job, and we'll see if anything survived. What is your guess so far? Which one do you think is going to survive our test, if any? Flat out. Feel how much air is in flat out. Can you even tell that you've lost air? No. Now feel the slime. Oh my gosh, that's virtually flat. Okay, now squish this one. That's impressive. You would be riding on this one, and you would not be riding yeah, on this one really at this difference. point. I'm gonna say that we are down to flat out, so we're gonna put an even bigger screw in the tire. <laughs> That's got some air coming out. Pretend like we're riding, we're rolling, we're rolling. There it is. Look at that. It's sizzling. It sounds like cooking bacon. Like, this is totally rideable. Like this is a normal pressure. I would actually ride off road. And the winner is flat out. It flat out didn't get a flat. Control dead from a thumbtack. Number two was the slime is kind of sort of holding up through the smaller things. But when we got to the screws, I don't think it could quite handle it. Then we tried the flat out, which is still holding up. Mr. Tuffy failed by the smallest drill bit mm -hmm. that we had. The Tannis armor also failed at the same point. Theory would be to put the Tannis liners in with the flat out. Then you have the thick foam and the awesome flat out and then 
You're indestructible. So one of the things that the Tannis armor advertises that nothing else does is that if your tire does go flat, you can run on it at a slower speed and basically get to wherever you need to go to get it patched up. So between the combination, if you wanted to spend about $140, then you could have what we think is a nearly indestructible flat tire combination. But if you have a budget to consider, is just go straight with the flat out. Less than 20 bucks, takes you like 10 minutes to put in. Super easy to do and obviously works really well because that's still holding air, right? Yeah, like we could ride on that right now, no problem. I hope you found that video informative and you learned something new about electric bikes that's gonna be helpful for your riding. If there's other things you wanna know about if you want to learn about suspension seat posts, I also have a video all about that. You can check it out right here. Right.